Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here bringing you this video from my usual location in my home office here in Jerusalem in Israel. And before I go any further in this video, let me just say firstly, thank you to whoever left a comment. Someone left me a comment recently. They said, uh, your, your night backdrop is night. This is my, this is my nighttime mode uh, when I have these little RGB lights in the background. But they said, why don't you try putting a bit of light on the backdrop? So whoever left that comment, appreciate the suggestion. I did take your lighting advice to heart. I have not only one, but two lights on me at the moment on the rear side of my desk. I have my backdrop lights and I have actually a light going back there as well. So I'll be interested to see when I watch this video back myself, whether the uh, lighting tinkering actually made any difference. Um, but thank you. I love being a small YouTuber because it means that I get to actually uh, read all the comments that come in and uh, take them on board. And I, I really appreciate the engagement from folks. So what I want to talk about today, um, today's video is firstly, the un unfortunately, I do have to put the disclaimer because it's just too risky to talk about anything related to mental health and medication without doing this. This video is not a substitute for going to your doctor if you do have, uh, if you do feel that you need to be on a uh, psychotropic medication or multiple medications or even this combo of medications go talk to your doctor because they know about it a thousand times more than me and probably anyone else you're going to find talking to you on the internet. But I do think that patient perspectives are important, which is why I occasionally upload videos about this stuff because um, personally it made a huge difference to me when I uh, finally summoned up the courage to start Lexapro, what got me over my hump was actually a YouTube video. And for whatever reason, the person who made it was a young female influencer um, and something about the video said made me think well you know what if she can summon up the courage to go on this medication then I can too so I do think there's value in these videos even if they're not um, professional advice because that's really the purview of doctors so the video that I want to make today is specifically about taking together uh, sertraline sorry an SSRI in this case uh, escitalopram and a, a tricyclic, in this case, amitriptyline. And I know that I was very, very scared to start this combo. So I wanna just kind of talk a little bit about that, why I've started this combo now, uh, et cetera. So the first thing, let's start with the SSRI. Um, so this is Lexapro, uh, chemical name, Um I'm based in Israel, hence the cool uh, Hebrew writing over here. It's called uh, it's a local trade name Cipralex or uh, Cipralex in Hebrew. And like many people, I'm on this medication for uh, anxiety and depression, uh, basically. So yeah, it took me a ridiculous amount of time from when a doctor said, uh, you should try this drug to when I said, as I, as I just said, you know what, this is, what could be worse than being anxious every day when I only just give this a shot. And I've personally had a great experience with Lexapro. Um, I've worked my way up to 20 milligrams, which is the um, maximum dose that can be prescribed by a GP. I've heard that sometimes psychiatrists will prescribe higher doses like 30 or even 40 milligrams, especially for people with OCD, but the kind of standard maximum is 20, so I'm at the maximum dose of this drug. Um, I have had side effects. I'm not sure whether I'd like to get into that now. Let's just say the typical side effects that men experience on an SSRI I unfortunately have also experienced, aka a bit of dysfunction in the uh, bedroom department. Um, but besides that, a bit of weight gain, or I, I'd say rather it's been harder to lose weight. Um, I haven't been eating very well recently. I've been eating too much takeout. I've been working too hard and just not taking very good care of myself. Um, so I would say it's been, the weight gain's been faster than it usually would be, or that's how I've experienced it. But I've just started a one hour a day um, biking uh, regime. So I'm using my exercise bike and trying to sort of get myself back down to a healthier weight. So that's why I'm on Lexapro, pretty standard anxiety, depression. I would say it's probably why the vast majority of people take this drug. Now, why am I also on amitriptyline? I've just started this medication a few days ago. Firstly, I just want to say thank you to the state of Israel because this, as you can see, is a Teva medication and there are many uh, deficits to living in Israel and I don't want to make this video about Israel because I realize it's uh, a little bit controversial and a sensitive subject for many folks, uh, but we do have a very good medical system here and these drugs are cheap relative to what they would cost in other countries. So um, definitely one benefit about living here. So anyway, why am I taking um, amitriptyline on top of Lexapro? So 
it's because I have been suffering for the past few years from something called functional dyspepsia. So I'm just going to give a little bit of info that I've learned uh, myself. Um, amitriptyline is one of the tricyclic antidepressants. The tricyclics were uh, basically what doctors had to prescribe before the advent of SSRI selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and SNRI's uh, selective, uh, sorry, serotonin and nor norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. So these are basically older antidepressants. They came on the market in the 1950s versus Prozac that came on the market in the 1980s. And um, tricyclics, unlike SSRIs, are called SSRIs because they um, basically all work in similar ways. Prozac, uh, which is fluoxetine, sertraline, escitalopram. You guys can probably tell I've geeked out on this stuff a little bit. Um, so they all work pretty much in a similar mechanism um, of action. Tricyclics, however, are named because of their chemical bond, which has three bonds, hence tri. Now, the big question is, well, why did uh, psychiatry go from using tricyclics like amitriptyline to uh, SSRIs like Lexapro? So I've also geeked out on this and I can tell you guys a little bit about this with, again, the disclaimer that if you really want to know more, go to a doctor. Well, basically tricyclics were less selective in terms of the neurotransmitters they targeted. So for instance, um, amitriptyline is, uh, has, I believe, again, correct me if I'm wrong, effects on histamine and it has strong um, anticholinergic properties. And basically when they came up as this newer class of antidepressants, the drugs were ironically, or well not ironically, sometimes a bit less effective, but they um, were much more zoned in on targeting uh, the right uh, neurotransmitters, uh, serotonin, and some, some have little effects on dopamine. So these earlier drugs like amitriptyline, nortriptyline, uh, imipramine, all the different tricyclic antidepressants, basically because they were less selective, they had a lot more side effects and patients had a harder time tolerating them. The side effects with these drugs tend to be um, stuff like uh, urinary, urinary retention, fatigue to a much greater extent than the SSRIs um, and there's a few other ones I won't really get into that so basically there is a good reason why medicine has uh, moved on from the um, from the tricyclics however low dose uh, tricyclics at used doses below what would be used for psychiatric indications like depression and anxiety uh, these older drugs actually remain the drugs of choice for basically um, nerve disorders. And that seems to be what I've been stuck with. When I had my gallbladder out three years ago, um, I expected to be just back to my usual uh, digestive selves recently, and I never quite recovered from the surgery. I've been having like a ton of bloating and burping since. So my gastroenterologist said, try amitriptyline and take 10, he actually prescribed 20 milligrams to take once a night. Now, after I saw my gastroenterologist and I was terrified of taking this old school antidepressant, I actually caved in and saw my psychiatrist first and I said, look, I'm in a bad place. I'm really depressed. My stomach is in a mess and uh, I accept I need to go on a medication. I just need something to get me out of this hole. And um, don't regret doing that, but my psychiatrist who I saw and you don't actually need to see a psychiatrist but um, I really wanted a specialist because of what I thought may be balancing these two drugs. He said, take Lexapro, it'll solve all your stomach problems. Now something that you might find yourself in if you have both a nervous disorder such as maybe migraines or um, even you know nerve pain from diabetes and you have developed a mental health disorder like anxiety or depression like me, if you have both going on at the same time, you might find yourself, and I hope you don't, but just to forewarn anyone, in what I found myself in, which was a weird tug of war between two different medical specialities, my psychiatrist was absolutely insistent that Lexapro would basically fix my stomach, and he would not listen to my gastro, who said, take amitriptyline. He said, these are old antidepressants. It's stupid, don't take that stuff. So I said, okay, I'll listen to my doctor and I went on Lexapro hoping it would kill two birds with the one stone 
for me, what I can say is that it made, it's been an amazing drug. Firstly, when I started getting my anxiety and depression under control, it's really been life-changing. And I think I definitely had anxiety and depression for many years before I saw treatment. I do think that anxiety and depression play a contributory role in um, functional gastro disorders like functional dyspepsia or IBS. But in my case, I can say that no matter how great my anxiety got, and there's a point where it just can't get much better, right? You're functioning pretty well without anxiety and depression in your life. For me, it just didn't really solve the stomach stuff. So after giving it six months on the highest legal dose of 20 milligrams, I finally said, well, if my psychiatrist isn't going to uh, be amenable to working with my needs and what the other doctor prescribed, I'm going to have to go back to the gastro. So now there's a lot of scary info online about combining uh, medications. And if you put these two drugs, escitalopram and SSRI and amitriptyline, the tricyclic, into a uh, medical uh, interaction checker, if you go down the terrible Dr. Google route, they'll say it's terrible. It's a very risky combination. You're going to end up with serotonin syndrome, uh, which is a real thing. Now, all I can say is that that really, really scared me. Um, but I went to two doctors, I went to the gastro, he said, it's fine. I went to, and then I also went to my family doctor with the gastroenterologist prescription and he said, it's fine. You don't need to worry. It is an outside chance. Here are the symptoms just in case it happens. But really I have lots of patients taking both these drugs. So I don't think I could have actually gone to this point of tacking on a second uh, drug, the amitriptyline, if it wasn't for the Lexapro because the Lexapro brought my anxiety down just enough that I could not completely freak out about the prospect of taking these two things together. Um, just want to end up on this. So I'm really, I've been on Lexapro for six months. I've just started taking the amitriptyline a week ago. So I, what I would say is that I have started both drugs and I can sort of do a little bit of, tr of a, a comparison. What I would say is that the fatigue starting amitriptyline is really, really intense. So I actually tried to start this medication before, before I saw the uh, psychiatrist and I said, I'm going to fulfill the gastro's prescription. And I actually couldn't make it past the second week. I was just too tired and I couldn't function on my work. I couldn't function at work. But I did notice that around the 10 day mark, not super long, I went from being completely zombified to being a little bit drowsy and kind of hard to wake up in the mornings or kind of, you know, when it takes you like a few hours to get out of first gear, that kind of a thing. It got better quite quickly. So um, compared to, but I remember also starting Lexapro, there was start of fatigue, but I would say it just wasn't anywhere near the intensity of amitriptyline. So, so far having taken these two drugs just for together for a short amount of time, I haven't noticed any untoward symptoms except for the um, drowsiness that comes with starting amitriptyline. I haven't noticed any weird symptoms that would suggest any sort of uh, interaction is occurring. And if I did, I would just tell my doctor and probably, I'm, I'm imagining he would probably get me off the amitriptyline uh, before the Lexapro. The amitriptyline, if you take, you should take it, you're, depending on what your doctor advises, uh, it's common to take it at night time because um, that kind of drowsiness sets in after like an hour and the plus advantage is you will sleep like an absolute baby. So I think there's definitely, um, this all plays in together. I know some people who are on amitriptyline Actually, I take that back. I haven't heard of people taking two different these two different classes of antidepressants together just for mental health. In other words, you need you take Lexapro and SSRI, and then you also take a tricyclic to like give it a bit more effect. Um, I'm sure there are lots of people. I've heard that it can be done. This kind of I think it's called augmentation approach. But I have met a lot of people um, when I was when I was anxiously, obsessively checking Facebook Facebook groups for other people who had taken Lexapro and amitriptyline, I did actually find a lot of people uh, in similar situations to me who had anxiety and depression plus migraines or plus, uh, what else do they use amitriptyline for? Uh, diabetic pain plus a bladder disorder. And I find lots of folks who are on uh, 20 milligrams of Lexapro and 10, 20, even 50 milligrams. So of course it's up to your doctor what he considers safe, but just saying that um, there's definitely people out there 
doing this combination. So yeah, uh, that's just the video I wanted to make because when I was anxiously uh, Googling this, it probably would have helped me if I found someone who was uh, had taken the combo and wanted to talk about it. So I don't know if I'm gonna manage to stick on the amitriptyline uh, for the long term, but I hope that I am gonna give it, I told my doctor I'd give it six weeks at least to see if it helps with those stomach symptoms like the burping that is currently going on. It's just been kind of a bit of a, bit of a plague since I had my gallbladder out. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you're thinking about taking these two drugs in combination, I hope it was helpful. Uh, because I'm not a doctor and all this disclaimer stuff, I obviously can't answer your medical questions. Uh, but nevertheless, I hope it was uh, just useful and perhaps encouraging in your own personal journey of uh, diagnosis and treatment. Thanks for watching, guys. And if you want to get more videos from me, they're not all about mental health. In fact, very few are about mental health. Uh, but if you are just for whatever reason interested in getting more videos from me, hit the subscribe button and you'll get your content uh, delivered to your YouTube feed. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Over and out.